Welcome to Four Eyes, the podcast series that gives you a clear view into the new grad optometry world across Canada and the US. And we are your hosts. I'm Dr. Deepan Carr. And I'm Dr. Amrit Bilku. Dr. Sony, thank you again for coming onto our podcast for the second time. We are so excited to have you back uh, more than a year later um, to catch up with you. But before we get into that, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners and any new listeners that we have on the podcast? Yeah, no, uh, first of all, thank you for having me back. Uh, love listening to you ladies and uh, I'm glad you're back in action too. And so uh, honored to be here and just just keep talking uh, about more topics. So uh, my name is Jasdeep Singh Sony. JD is my nickname. Opto Turban is my alter ego on social media. And uh, I graduated in 2020 May from my couch, which was amazing. Uh, <laughs> Moved back to California, worked in Bakersfield, California for a couple of years at a MDOD clinic, did some nonprofit work on the side, worked at Lens Crafters and Target, and now I'm working at Costco a little bit more north in central California and uh, loving my opportunities, loving what's next and, and figuring out what I want for my career in life. Awesome. Ooh. Yeah, you've done a lot in the last few years after graduation, so we're really excited to dig deeper into what you started out with as a new grad versus, you know, what your what type of setting you're going into now. You just said you were working in an MD OD practice setting right after graduation, right? Mm -hmm. How did you decide on that particular type of setting? Yeah, so uh, coming out of school, the question was, well, going to school, actually, my, my primary goal, I kept saying, hey, I'm going to be non practicing. I don't even know if I want to see patients. And then slowly as you go to meetings and start talking to industry reps and, and influencers and key industry leaders, you actually need to be like a great optometrist to start talking about products to stick out there. Who would have known, right? So yeah. uh, with that concept, I was like, look, things are fresh right now in school. Uh, this is the time to challenge myself. Maybe I don't need as high as an income as I'd like. Uh, yeah, residency is definitely an option. And I think that's a great option depending on what your goals are. For me, I knew it wasn't like necessarily, hey, I have to go into teaching or I need this residency, but I want a residency type experience in order to get that that initial exposure and, and cement what I've learned from school. I feel like it's different when you see it in a person interaction. Um, even for us, our fourth rotation in 2020 was cut. So uh, okay. I think having another uh, like challenging experience was really important to me. And so I was going to stay in Arizona. Arizona is great. And then all of a sudden COVID hits and people are like, wow, we're not trying to hire young ODs. We're just trying to keep our staff. And so uh, ended up in a town called Bakersfield, California. Uh, for anybody who knows what it is, uh, you know, it's pretty named after what's going on there. You know, there's a field, uh, you know, a lot of agriculture, <laughs> uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And so I worked at the nonprofit where we took a lot of Medi-Cal government insurance. Uh, in our town specifically, we had a lot of Hispanic patients who were immigrants, a lot of Punjabi patients. And so I was able to learn a lot, uh, working with surgeons one-on-one, -on -one, helping mm -hmm. low-income patients, saw a lot of cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, uh, yeah. really built myself in those first two years. I think as a new grad, you know, we would always discuss what type of career we're looking for. We'd be so nervous. Are we going to find a job? You know, where is the job market? And also who gives the highest pay? But then once you hear it's in a rural setting, I think a lot of us get nervous because, you know, we also still want to be close with family. We still want to have that social life after school. And so kudos to you for like jumping right into a rural setting because you were pretty far from your family too, right? Um, when you were in Bakersfield, correct? Yeah, about uh, two, two and a half hours. So uh, it wasn't yeah. like they were right there. Uh, they were more in the suburbs of LA. I appreciate, appreciate all that. I think uh, it's hard. I think these are all individualized decisions. How do we choose? Do we want to do residency or go in corporate or yeah. go into nonprofit work? And uh, at some point, there's not going to be that perfect fit. Uh, but mm -hmm. you can kind of just take the evidence, kind of see what the bigger picture is and try to make a decision. And uh, so far, it's been going well. Yeah. And um, for any of our listeners, we had Dr. Sony on our podcast before. So in our episode description, I'll put your previous episode in there. For anyone who wants to hear your personal experience working at that MDOD practice, because we did talk about it quite a bit. Um, but now, you know, um, a year and a bit later, um, you know, we heard through the grapevine and through some personal conversations that you're maybe thinking about changing the way that you practice. So why have you now decided 
to change your practice setting or even just the way that you want to handle your career in the profession? Mm -hmm. that, that's an excellent question. Something that I'm still working on. I, I think yeah. uh, when you're working, you know, sometimes it's hard to see really what the big picture is. You're like, what is my paycheck going to be? Uh, what, what commission may I have gotten if I saw more contact lens patients? Uh, it's easy to see like day to day what is going on. But then uh, I, I think it was really important for me. I started to learn after a couple of years to, to, to kind of think big picture. What do I really want for my career, my personal life? How do I integrate this all? Uh, for me, after working six days a week, uh, every other week, working in multiple clinics, Target and Lens Crafters on the weekend, nonprofit during the week, uh, there, were, there was burnout. There was uh, a lack of passion uh, at some point. Uh, the questions are, was this even the right decision? Was this the right field? But I think that's where you try to, you know, I really sat down and I still do this I, I journal and I say, what is really important to me for my career, my, my life? And uh, the things that came to me for me personally were flexibility, um, having a, a decent salary, uh, something that challenges me and shows results, something that shows that I'm growing when I work harder and, and felt that there were other opportunities that can match that. And so luckily, uh, or fortunately, Central California has a lot of those opportunities. And I think that's where, um, I think when we're in school, we, we see things a certain way, maybe that's not necessarily re uh, reality, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, in school, we, we really harp on medical, which is great. And I think that's a great route. Um, but I don't think necessarily, it's maybe the route for everybody, depending on your personal goals. Um, do you ladies feel that way? Like, did you feel like uh, maybe you thought a certain way about a certain type of modality or career uh, form in school and then you know coming out like your perspective changed I think I during school I always wanted to do private practice for sure but I think the one thing about private practice that I realize it's not so much maybe the cases you see but more of like the staff management that happens <laughs> behind the scenes where you're like hmm I wasn't really expecting I wasn't trained this. for this <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't trained for this or I didn't realize this was going to happen. Oh, how do you deal with this? So yeah. I guess, I don't know. What about you, Emirate? I went into optometry school not really knowing a lot about the career. Um, and I <laughs> and no, I, I seriously, right? I, I think a lot of people do that. You know, I'm medical careers was pretty much what my parents wanted to slightly nudge me towards, right? So I, I chose optometry and I said, hey, let's do this and, you know, see what it's all about. Of course, as school went along, I started learning more about different specialty areas, of course. So for me, BV, vision therapy, fell in love with it. Um, but growing up in my community, um, I was actually never exposed to private practice. I was only exposed to corporate retail chain opticals. And so I actually didn't know what private practice even meant. I didn't know what it was about. So I think as a student, I just had the mentality that when I go back to my specific hometown, that's all I'm going to get. And that's, those are the jobs that I applied for because that's kind of all I knew, you know, as your career develops and as you start to talk to more colleagues, once you're outside of school, you start to then see all those different modalities. And I mean, even the things that Jazz Deep, you've talked to me about, you know, of things that you're planning to do with your career. I still never even thought that we could have those sort of opportunities. So every time I'm meeting someone new, I'm just learning more. Um, but now I'm definitely all about private practice. <laughs> I think um, that was the other thing with optometry. I didn't realize how diverse the field could yeah. be. When I graduated, I, it was pretty similar to Amrit. Like I was like, I was more exposed to private practice, but I was like, okay, this is going to be it. Like yeah. even when we graduated, I was like, all right, this is probably it. And then mm -hmm. until we started this podcast, the exposure we got to so many different people and what they were doing, I was like, what? Oh, I didn't even yeah. know. Like these people were like optometrists and like, you know, doing lectures at different like, yeah conferences around the world and stuff and doing all these different kind of innovative things so yeah mm -hmm. that was just a huge eye-opener for me I yeah I mean uh two things that uh, I heard from you ladies uh number one uh when you said like hey uh I didn't really question it like I just wanted to talk to you I actually think that's like more common as you're saying than we really think about but yeah. you say that, it's like it sounds crazy right but yeah. it's so true like why do we make the decisions that we make and then like, you know, what path are we doing? Are we just doing the same thing over and over and not really questioning what we're doing? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of us do that, but not, not just like optometry, right? With like even our personal lives. Yeah. And, uh, the other thing uh, you mentioned deep on was, um, yeah, there is so much. Like, it's crazy. Every time, like we go to the conference, uh, you know, 
uh, so many people have so many ideas and, and, and yeah. there's so many venues like, you know, you want to do myopia management, you want to do specialty content lenses, yeah. Yeah. you want a business, yeah. you want to work in medical, it, it just goes on. And, but that's the beauty of it. It's like, it's kind of like you, you're trying to mold uh, your career into like what you really want to make of it. And that, I think that's where I would say we're, we're, we're kind of going from there in the beginning. You're like, you know, the first year you're maybe scared about like every little thing you want to uh, look up, you know, in the book, everything you had, you, you message your friends over every little uh, concern you may yeah. have and you yeah. start to build yourself start to feel comfortable. Then now it's like, how do I do what I'm actually passionate about to take it to the next level? Next step. Yeah, I agree. Jazdeep, for you, looking back now, were there any specific signs of burnout while you were in your previous work setting? Any specific signs to you that you were like, wow, okay, I think there's something wrong here? Yeah, I well, uh, I got channeled a little uh, when you said that. So uh, I would see uh, like 30 to 35 patients a day in the medical environment. And so some of these patients, you know, you're doing RFL, some of them you're refracting. Um, and quite frankly, in the middle of the day, I, I would like feel really cranky. And, uh, sometimes yeah. I felt like I was spreading that negative energy to my technicians or sometimes if a patient started talking more, I, I felt internally, like I had negative thoughts in my head. And I think, uh, another challenge was as a young OD, you don't know, sometimes it's hard to communicate to staff or management. Mm -hmm. Maybe when they're not ODs, like, Hey, this is how many patients I'm comfortable seeing, or what type of patients I'm comfortable seeing, or how it works oh, yeah. with how, you know, how many patients you need to scribe for. And. I think there was a lot of like uh, keeping your mouth shut because you think you have to, you, you, you can't open it to that or you don't deserve to have those conversations. And I think, I think that, that was the moment uh, when you said that, that kind of triggered me, you know, um, even, yeah. even on Saturdays, uh, that would, that would all build up to Monday to Friday. And then on Saturday, when you're, when you're doing, uh, when I was in corporate, um, it burns out, you go slower in exams. Like I remember mm -hmm. uh, I even had an optician once like bang a stick on my door. Cause I was going too slow. And in my head, I was like, <laughs> uh but also it was like a sign of burnout and I told her hey look just not feeling well and then she understood and then didn't bang the stick on the door but I you know I think those were the signs there were the signs and that that's where the you know it took a little too long but uh you eventually realized like hey change needs to happen yeah I I know I've personally felt like exactly what you've described and I know what deep on's nodding and how much Absolutely. we bent to each other <laughs> we we all feel the same signs like um you know, working seven days a week as a new grad, which is the biggest new grad mistake. Yeah. But I think everyone needs to experience that to then start to understand what you're worth and the care you should be providing for your own mental and physical health. But yeah, working seven days a week. I mean, you get angry before you get to work. You're angry <laughs> at lunch. And then you're yeah. angry at the end of the day. And then you're finally happy just in your car driving home from a long day of work. But then you're <laughs> angry once you get home because you're like, well, now I only have two hours before bed because I have <laughs> to do it all again tomorrow. And yeah, it, the frustration just lingers for so long. You just let that repeat every day. You just don't even know how much that burnout is like slowly breaking you down. Yeah. It's but I, I think that one thing you said about having staff support you or keeping those communication lines yeah. open, I think that is a huge thing for new grads because you're right. We all just kind of assume, oh, I'll just keep my mouth shut about how yeah. these appointments are booked. Oh, something was booked after I was supposed to leave. Okay, I'll just not say anything about that. Oh, yeah. this person is 30 minutes late, but we're still going to see them. Okay, I just want, you know what I mean? So it's like, just letting your staff know like, hey, I'm I'm actually not okay with this. Can we talk about this? Or maybe we can find another way to kind of support me so we can get mm -hmm. through this day together. If you're scared to speak up and you're scared to say something, I think internally we all have that fear of, okay, then what if I just get fired, <laughs> right? Like if I if I speak up, they're going to fire me. I'm not going to be able to keep And you don't job. want anyone to hate you either. You don't want yeah. the team to be like, oh, she just this person complains a lot, like, you know, cause you're new. So you just kind of feel like, well, I guess I'll just deal with this for the next month and hopefully it'll change by me. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> so, like, you don't want to over communicate and like go too off on someone, be too negative as you're saying, or you under communicate, yeah. but then you're holding that tension in. I would yeah. say a, a stable office should want you to be able to communicate those things, create an environment where you can. Uh, yeah. obviously hopefully you as a first or second or third year can also be more conscious about trying to communicate more 
And uh, overall, I mean, when you're happier, the doctor's happier, the patient's happier, the technicians are happier. It's a whole ecosystem. If something gets infected there, it's going to get affected yeah. in the front. The you just said something so important to create an environment where you mm-hmm. can talk about those things. That is so yeah. important. Yeah. If you like that owner of that clinic has to kind of take charge of that. It's funny because uh, it's like building a bit of emotional intelligence, but also like how do you talk to a technician versus a CEO? How do you try to teach a technician about, uh, I, had, I had a technician today kindly was telling a, a, a patient that the optos photo might be better than a dilation and uh, mm. that, you know, dilation is terrible. And I was like, look like that, you know, I stepped out. I always keep my door open on purpose actually just to kind of, you know, have conversations yeah. and make sure everything's going the flow. And uh, it was just like, hey, respectfully, her sentiment is correct. We we definitely want to encourage you to do the photo. However, dilation is definitely a good option. It's just that the photo allows you to not have the side effects, dot, 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 et cetera. So mm-hmm, I guess yeah. uh, those con- those conversations, how to do it in a polite way, because if you say in a rude way, she's not going to listen to you. Yeah. She's not going to She's not going to want to do the survey of the patient. So how do you like kindly communicate that, respectfully do it, and then also affect change with, with not just being fun dad and not getting anything done or fun mom? Yeah. Like, Yes, they do emotional intelligence. Yes, that's another yeah. important thing for sure. <laughs> that you always have to, it's tricky. You have to watch your tone. I know like I always have a tone where I sound very direct, but my words are very friendly. So I'm always <laughs> working on my tone when I'm asking for favors or I'm asking questions or I'll sometimes come in and be like, why did you book this patient? Like, I'll just kind of like <laughs> sing it away so that my staff like, can kind of me. have a little laugh, but then they also understand where I'm coming from to be like, Hey, w- th- this is not okay. But I'm also yeah. very obviously trying not to upset you or trying not to come off very harsh. So okay, but that's, like, that's exactly what Jazzy was talking about. Like that sign yeah. of burnout irritation right so like again you don't want to go off on someone but if that builds over time right oh yeah you know those tiny mistakes that are not intentional you're kind of just like why like why was this it becomes a bigger issue when you're yeah it becomes a bigger issue that's more personal than what's actually really happening there oh yeah Mm -hmm. I think it's uh what you're hitting on is like outlining expectations so the first time something happens, right? They schedule the patient wrong. You can say it in the loving, funny tone. Yeah. That's all like, hey, look, if this happens again, like I'm going to have to come back here and we're going to have to talk about it again. And you can say it yeah. nicely. But if it happens over and over, I think that's where you have the right to say, look, this is my license. I'm not comfortable practicing like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is my right to say I'm not, I'm not going to do this. And I've had yeah. to yeah. say that certain times too. And Jazz Deep, have you experienced uh, burnout in any other aspects of the profession other than just your work setting? Yes, definitely. Uh, I guess things go in parallel. And so uh, the reason why we've all met is through social media, podcasting, uh, maybe doing it, working with Defocus at certain times in, in our careers. Or uh, for me, I, I definitely was uh, really involved in it too. And I've definitely taken a step back because uh, I didn't feel authentic to myself and the brand I was bringing to the, the field and definitely want to come back. I, I feel like there's so many benefits with social media, making friendships, where we've only met once or twice and, and, and look, we can have these conversations, which is, which is so beautiful and uh, pick each other's brains and, and see if we can make our own careers better. But also there can be a, a dark side where uh, maybe you're comparing yourself. Maybe you are doing something maybe out of not the right purpose. And so that's where I personally was posting about things when I was doing these, uh, you know, clinics, you know, maybe the, the nonprofit or uh, lens crafters target. And I felt I was being authentic to what my brand is, and what I is, what I am as, as a human. And so, definitely evaluating that and going to make a comeback. But um, I think there's burnout in that sense too, when you're just doing something without thinking through what you're doing, like, Hey, uh, I can, I can honestly say I posted just to get attention or posted just to post, but I, I want to come back and say, Hey, if I want to affect change, I want to do it with something that I wholeheartedly believe in. No, I totally agree. I think um, that's a huge uh, point about burnout with social media that I'm glad you brought up because a lot of optometrists are now utilizing social media, um, not in a negative way. They're, they're still promoting, you know, educational content, but you know, when we were students, we just discovered the optometric side of social media. And of course, in the last few years, it's blown up. So now I can't even imagine being a student now because there's so many students that are making Instagram or social media accounts 
to like follow their optometry school journey. And I'm like, I don't even think we had time to like go to the bathroom (laughs) in school. Like, you know, how much pressure are they probably feeling to be like, as a student, maybe you'll get more attention from job opportunities. If you're on social media, maybe that's where you're going to make more networking connections. You know, if you're on social media, but that's another job all on its own. Like as a student, it's already hard just to go through school. And now Instagram is kind of like almost like a requirement for you to be considered maybe a successful student or like a popular student. If you have, you know, an account like that would stress me out as a student to go through something like that. I think it's that pressure to also create a brand too, right? Like when you're a student, they kind of, everyone was kind of talking about, oh, you need to brand yourself. You need to be unique. You need to kind of create this you know, or about yourself, how you're different from everyone, but everyone was kind of doing the same thing and going on Instagram and saying, you know, what's astigmatism and all that stuff. And it was like, (laughs) like, oh, that's going to be my next post, by the way, guys, I'll do what's, what's astigmatism. Yeah, but Um, the intention is good. It's just like, yeah, it was just a lot. But yeah, when we were students that I don't think anyone talked about that, like Instagram, it was just crazy to us. But yeah, I don't know how we would react if we had that exposure as students. Um, but Jazdeep, what specific advice would you have for our listeners who may be experiencing signs of burnout right now where they're practicing? I think everybody should sit down and uh, just take 10 minutes to journal what they want from their career, what qualities they want. Like I said, for me personally, it was flexibility, advancing, showing growth, uh, a certain salary, and and then I was like, wow, um, as opportunities kept coming, actually, this opportunity that I thought I should do doesn't even fit what I wrote on this piece of paper. So I think uh, wow. being conscious about what's actually important to you and your purpose and, and what you want, and then making decisions based on that. Uh, I think that really matters. I think we should all do that more. And I, I think it's just really hard, right? Like, uh, if you say medical optometry is the most important thing to you, you it gives you a lot of passion. And then you say... Uh, you know, maybe not working weekends, maybe having PTO, maybe having a uh, good medical insurance and then, oh yeah, having a good salary. But then you see this other job that offers you way more salary, but that does, does maybe has good PTO, but does not medical, you know, what, what's the obvious choice? What's important to you, right? Like, uh, yeah. I think it's easy to use some of these things to make us seem like we're happier, whether it be the money or the PTO or the location. But I think you really just have to ask yourself what is truly important to you and then see from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot to um, add on to that journaling. That's huge. Mm-hmm. And I, I do that as well. I don't journal on a daily or a regular basis, but actually at the beginning of every year, I write um, financial goals and then I write down career goals or just like optometric professional goals. And um, yeah, you look back at it when the year's done and uh, intermittently throughout the year to just kind of say, Oh, like, you know, I wanted to do, I wanted to write an article or, and, and get it published, or I wanted to do this sort of CE for me. Like I wanted to do more vision therapy, CE lectures, um, or I, I wanted to create my professional Instagram account, which was my goal for 2022. And so then, you know, at the end of the year, you kind of go through that list again and you just see, you know, how, um, how, how much you value that career and like, you know, how much you've worked towards getting those goals down. And it feels so good mentally too, to just like physically cross off, like those goals that you've met or things that you're always working towards. I feel like it makes you more grounded in where you're practicing. Is that getting you to those goals? Um, and yeah, not even for optometry. Like I think everyone should do like every year, just write down things that they want professionally, personally, financially, um, socially, and like, just write, write it down, even if it's once, but you're going to manifest that the more you, you know, write it out, take a look at it. It's that's huge. It's a, it's a form of self-reflection, right? So I think that's really important. I think we kind of all, when we're working six to seven days a week and we're like, Oh, tomorrow we're working again. There's no kind of form of self-reflection or just kind of staying in that stillness where you're like, am I happy or what am I doing for a second? 
And the other thing is, you know, maybe money is not always the answer. I think I remember one of our old episodes, we kind of talked about when we just started working, we were like, oh my God, like how much are we getting paid? We got these student loans to pay off. But what I've learned is it's not always the money that's the answer. You guys, you have to take a look at the whole picture. And just like what you said, Jazzy, you have to take account into everything like location. Yeah. Money, like where you're working, who you're working with it. It all kind of matters, right? At the end for your happiness. The money is a hard one. I think we all would yeah. love to have as much as we could, right? But yeah. with, with the money, there are, there could be consequences, you know, where you're living, how many hours you're working, how many hours you're seeing, how many patients you're seeing an hour, how stressful the environment may, may be. And that could something that could easily distract you. It personally has for me. Yeah, same. Yeah. Well, for, uh, for all of us, I think. Yeah. That's why we were all like, let's work seven days a week. We can all do it. <laughs> Yeah. It's fine. I mean, at the end of the day, as a new grad, when we have to think, if we have the mentality of, you know, if I work a lot and I work at these like, you know, places that pay me a lot, seven days a week, weekends, holidays, you know, I can pay off my student loans in like, you know, five years and be done. I think you also have to remember you have to survive past the five years to enjoy <laughs> your debt free life. And <laughs> A little bit of a serious note here, some people, and we know people personally, they don't survive and they, they yeah. do not make it past that. So, and, 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 you know, like we're talking about burnout, I'm very sure that all three of us and everyone else listening has had a moment in their life where they've probably reached a really, really low point after graduation when they're being overworked you know, having thoughts and feelings of depression, anxiety, mental health issues. So if you really want to pay off those student loans in five years, you also have to remember you need to survive past the five years to enjoy that debt-free life. So it's okay. I think if we have to remember, yes, debt sucks, but you can still slowly pay off loans and enjoy the time you have with family, friends, or other hobbies that you want to spend your income on, right? While mm -hmm. you're also paying off the loans partially. Yeah. Which I had to tell I myself. Like <laughs> five years is a long time, right? Like people are like, oh, I'm just going to pay this off in three to five We years. couldn't even last two years. Like I couldn't last <laughs> two years. I worked seven days a week for one year. Yeah. Now I'm six days a week for all of 2022. Now I'm going to cut down to four to five days. <laughs> I couldn't, guys, I couldn't do it for a year. I think this was it's every OD new grad I've talked to. I, I talked to another new grad who worked seven days a week for two years to pay off her student loans. And she said, you know what happened to me? I, she was like, I was miserable. I had to book myself a massage every Sunday because yeah. I was so stressed out. And yeah. she was like, if I could do it all over again, I don't think I would ever do that. We've all experienced like the work hard part, but I think then maybe with that same amount of effort, there's a way to like work smart, right? So yes. uh, for example, if you're working at a clinic and you see, I don't, let's just say 20 patients a day, and let's say 25 patients a day and $2,000 came in because of you. We understand there's expenses, there's staff, there's electricity, whatever it may be. Let's just say at the end of the day, there was a thousand dollars left over. Your paycheck is 500 to $700 business is making some sort of money, you're getting some sort. If you start running your own clinic, you start having your own lease, imagine how much of that $2,000 you're actually getting, you're getting more. Maybe mm -hmm. you're putting more time on the business side. Yeah, that's true. But maybe you're getting more of the paycheck. Maybe now you mm -hmm. hire someone, maybe now they're working for you. Maybe you're not putting as much time and you're putting more hours on the business side. Uh, that's one you know example with the private practice model, the lease model, but there's a, maybe you're putting less time now that you're running the business actually after putting that initial work effort and you're working less and you're actually making more. So I think there's a way to even work smarter. Maybe, you know, that applies to social media with brands. Like as you post more, you're getting more deals, you're making more money. Then also you're not having to put more time in clinic. You're not burning yeah. out. You're enjoying it more. So I think there's a work smart part that I think we all need to figure out too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where that time of self-reflection comes in. If you get that time, if you're working like seven days a week, right? I think that's just the part that's missed. Cause it's like, again, coming back to that question, it's like, Am I happy what I'm doing? What else can I do to like make this situation a little bit right. better? You know? Yeah. I've had many conversations with my husband actually about my Instagram account because I love making content, 
I will always make content, even if I'm not compensated for it, which I'm still not. <laughs> We talk about this a lot, right, Deepwan? But um, yeah, you know, I when I was experiencing burnout towards the end of this year, working six days a week, um, you know, I told my husband I might want to take off a one day of practicing so that I can work on creating more digital content. And and my husband said, but you don't get paid for that. So why, you know, why would you want to lose a day of income to dedicate your time to something that you don't? Uh, make an income off of. And, and I said, well, the content that I'm creating, I might not get paid right now, but when I'm putting that content out there, I'm getting referrals. I'm getting mm -hmm. patients in the neighborhood, finding me online and then coming in to see me for a vision therapy assessment, which is an out-of-pocket expense. That's not a government paid exam. I get paid a lot more to do those. And then now I'm getting more patients signed up for vision therapy. It's not mm -hmm. going to happen tomorrow, but you know what? Five years down the road, I'm sure most of my patient population is going to be from the population that sees my content. So, you know, I, you have to, yeah, I, I had to make that decision to say, I'm going to spend one day a week or, you know, one day every couple of weeks, just sitting at home making content. And that over time makes me happy. I love it. I enjoy it. It's not a chore. It's still about my career and down the road, it will help me to grow. It'll help me to continue educating myself, educating others, and it'll help me grow my practice. I think that's a great example. It's going to yeah. pay off. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of a, I don't want to say gamble, but like a risk, nothing's yeah. conceived, but like, as you put the work in, not everybody's doing this. This is why it's so hard. Like uh, yeah. by challenging yourself in this way, if you ever started a business, people will follow you, people will message you. Yeah. Now you have all these industry people that are in touch with you that you can always ask for advice and just pick up the phone. Yeah. Like that That is, I mean, you can't, you can't really uh, quantify that. Yeah. No, you definitely cannot. So Jazz Deep, so you talked about some signs of burnout you experience. I guess what steps are you planning to take to identify and address future signs of burnout? Uh, we, we touched on journaling. Uh, mm -hmm. We touched on communicating effectively with staff. Um, I think life coaching and having people who can coach you, whether you're friends or uncles, mentors, I think that's important. I have a group of three people that I count on my best friend from optometry school, who gives me the clinical side, my sister, who's a role model, who knows me from birth. And then also an uncle who's worked in corporate engineering for 20, 30 years, who understands politics of the office that I don't understand. And I, nice. any big decision, I have at least a, a phone call once a week with them and consult them and see what they see. We, we have a blind side that we don't really see what's going on in the clinic and, uh, I think having people to keep you grounded and understand what is best for you and, and what they see is important. So life coaching. Um, I also think meditation is important. Like today, a, a patient was really upsetting me. Um, you know, I, I, I had, uh, we were kind of 15 minutes into lunch. I, my staff doesn't get paid. Uh, you know, they get paid hourly. So, uh, you know, a, a minute to them is way more than to me necessarily. And uh, I was trying to carry on with the exam after answering their questions. It didn't happen. Kind of frustrated me, but I, I sat there for two minutes at my alarm and just kind of debriefed. Um, so mm -hmm. I guess working on your mental health, figuring out your purpose, having people that you could talk to, as we said, yeah. um, I think, I think those are all important things. Do you ladies have anything that you, you do anything differently? Breathing that. Yeah. What you said, like the two minutes of just quiet time. Uh, I think deep ones talked to me about that before too. And breathing deep breaths slow breaths that is it really does instantly calm you down um shoulder tension release it um sometimes even not in the practice but when i'm really uh stressed or frustrated at home i just lie on the floor on my back <laughs> so you know i'm i'm not even lying i i will just lie down back flat against the floor and i'll just breathe for like two minutes and I feel great. Yeah. I think for me, when things get a bit chaotic, my parents really bring me back down to earth mm -hmm. and they're like, Hey, just take a moment here. Think about what you're saying. Is this, you know, is this really as big of a deal as you think it is? Yeah. And they kind of bring me back down to earth where I'm like, I'll survive this. Okay. <laughs> then, you know, like what you were kind of talking about having those people in your life to kind of bring you back down to earth and kind of tell you you know what's a big deal maybe what's not so much of a big deal mm -hmm. but 
for sure. And just kind of also a little bit of self-reflection at the end of the day too, to be like, okay, what just happened here? How could have I handled that a little bit better? Or what could I improve on? Uh, you know, I, I can't believe for me personally right now, uh, I think we talked about this at, uh, a, you know, at San Diego that I, I work three days a week on average, which I love. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm lucky because my, my goal is flexibility, right? So I drive to the middle of California, 90 minutes away from the city I live in, which is three hours away from my parents in LA, but I work three days a week. And that's what makes me happy. It gives me time to actually go visit, go on trips, spend time with family. I think that's what you really have to do. Just ask yourself what you want and, and, and also have conversations with people and network. I got my current gig because someone DM me, you know, so, so yeah. uh, you never know, like <clears throat> having a profile, which is like an online resume is very important there too. And uh yeah I think this is valuable for everybody to kind of hear like to just just process what's important to you and uh how to not get burnt out and uh how to go forward there yeah speaking of all this Jazdeep what's next for you so what are you looking forward to in this new year for your career and professional development I would say so with all this uh stress burnout and and realizing uh what didn't work uh kind of helping I'd love to help find people, get people to f find opportunities where they don't feel like they're in that similar situation. If there's a way mm -hmm. I can guide people or give advice on that, uh, I would love to do that. And so uh, one one idea I've teased around is recruiting, helping people find jobs that they really like. After working in medical, private practice, corporate, I understand how many patients may be good for someone and might not be good someone, what type of patients may work for someone and vice versa. And I, I'd like, I feel like there needs to be more of like an agency for doctors where yeah, recruiters are there too. Maybe they're not doctors. Maybe they don't understand what comes from our perspective. It'd be nice if someone from our perspective kind of like helped guide us to find jobs that we want and 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 took that process and took time to to kind of lead us through that. This is such an amazing idea because I yeah. feel like when you, you know, even for not even for new grads, even for seasoned like ODs mm -hmm. who are just like, I don't know what I want. Jazz Deep, tell me where I should go. Like, yeah, what should I like I'm not happy in this setting or that and I'm struggling here just to kind of have that guide of like okay well maybe or ask them asking like even important questions like I don't know like what kind of people do you want to work with what kind of patients do you want to see like these are something things I don't even think about but I think that's really important because I feel like when you're not happy in your current setting you're kind of left alone to be like I don't what, know do what do I do, do. I just kind of look for another job and hopefully that works out and then usually it doesn't because you're just end up finding the same thing so yeah. yeah I think that's an amazing idea that's so awesome and then you could get astrology involved and like the <laughs> stars Let, sorry I'm just gonna you know what we'll we'll work on this I'll be the Instagram manager for your you can swipe right on your job yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> I love that though I love it and will we be seeing any TikTok videos from you anytime soon because we miss you <laughs> um, they'll be back they'll be back don't worry yeah oh, i'm excited well, to hear about you ladies though i mean um you know we're talking about purpose and podcasts and reflection and i, I feel like you, you know this podcast too uh has changed in some ways like uh yeah you know what are your thoughts on like where you want to go and and all that you know for us like yeah you know this whole conversation what we're talking about with like burnout from like social media I mean I think we initially kind of felt that with even with this podcast when we were oh, yeah. doing weekly episodes and we were like okay hold on like what why are we doing this again we were just tired and like you know getting irritated even at the end by like okay we got to put out another episode this week yeah. and when we took that break from it then we realized like okay, well, I think we want to come back to this. And we found our the reason why we wanted to do this. And yeah, the main reason is to help new grads and ODs, like, you know, get through their career and jobs and yeah. whatever it is in school even. But when you're just going to go, go, go process, and you're not really talking to each other or figuring out why we're doing this again, you get lost in that. And you just, oh, yeah. you know, that burnout, like what we were talk talking about. So and now that we're back, um, you know, we we had to reevaluate those, um, the purpose of the podcast and what we want out of it. Just like I said, you have to go through those seven days a week, feel the burnout, and then understand what you need, right? And so we did that with the podcast. We did it every week, you know, for many, many weeks, almost two years. 
And then now that we've come back, we have to think, you know, what do we want out of the podcast? What do we enjoy about it? But how often do we even want to do the podcast, right? What's our schedule like? How often can we do it so that we don't feel that burnout again? Um, and funny enough, we wrote out, you know, the four of us um, with the other co-hosts, Dr. Rindawa and Dr. Kuhn, uh, we wrote out all of our goals for the podcast. So it, it was like journaling. We had it all written down. And when Deepon and I started up the podcast again, I went through that document and I looked at our previous goals and our values and our mission for the podcast. So it was really nice and humbling to see that we did pretty much maintain those values and the goals all throughout the last two years. And now our goals again are slightly different, but we're still keeping those core values, um, you know, and what we wanted the podcast to represent and the vibe we wanted it to have. So, so it was, yeah, we, we basically did all the things that we talked about, um, from your experience, Jazzy, we journaled, we got burnt out, we took a break, we came back, we're reassessing and now we're loving it more than ever. Well, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jazz Deep, for coming back on. We always love talking to you. Uh, we learn so much. And I really do believe that the listeners are going to really benefit from this conversation. Um, and we're excited to see what you do in your career because you're definitely going to be a successful matchmaker. And we're going to be very happy promoting your next business venture. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate the, the time. You know, I'm excited for see us all to grow. And that's the thing. We have these conversations. We, we apply it. We, we listen to it. Like, uh, I learned so much from your experiences too. And so uh, excited to see where the podcast goes and where you ladies go as well. Thank you everyone for listening to Four Eyes. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe and leave us a rating to give us a feedback on how we're doing. And you can check us out on Instagram at Four Eyes Off Tom for a lot more content and to share your thoughts on this episode. We'll see you next time.